welcome one, welcome all to another episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. I'm Julia Wiegand, and March is National Brain Injury Awareness Month. So, when Tingo replaces me front and center, we are going to be talking about concussions, what causes them, how you can get them, and how physical can treat them. So, don't go anywhere. Right after the break, we've got more on concussions on today's episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. And welcome back to today's episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. I'm Julia Wiegand, and if you've ever had a concussion, then today's episode is for you. Luckily, we've got Tingo front and center, ready to get started. How's it going, Ting? I'm fantastic, how about yourself? Oh, thankfully not concussed. Uh -huh. <laughs> and speaking of which, March is Brain Injury Awareness Month, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And we are talking concussions. Mm -hmm. and not only do concussions happen very, they're a very common thing that can happen to somebody. People typically think sports, mm -hmm. but there are so many unfortunate ways that you can suffer from a concussion. There is, there is, yeah. So when we do talk concussions, and like you said, most people's minds goes to the contact sports um, that we play, uh, football, uh, rugby, hockey, you know, all the, the contact sports. And women's soccer apparently is a very high incidence of concussion as well. And um, so, and that's an important part of it because uh, obviously we want to try and protect our kids and prevent concussions as much as possible because it can have life-altering consequences. So they found that um, um, in contact sports at the collegiate level, about 10% of all athletes will suffer a concussion at some time in their life. And um, when you go down to high school sports, that number actually gets up to 20%. So it's actually quite common. And they're saying that it might actually be underreported because... Um, Myself, I've probably been concussed playing football before because I've gotten up from a tackle and felt dizzy, but you know, you don't want to come out of the game and you're like, I gotta be tough, so I didn't tell anyone about it. So that's actually quite common in, in um, high school and collegiate sports. So the actual number might actually be higher than that. So um, um, concussion in sports is, is quite important, but there's also a term that we use which is non-sports uh, related concussions as well. So. Um, a lot of people in the in normal society don't think about concussions, but it actually happens a lot. We don't really know the the right incidences of how often it happens, because not too many people, you know, will know what concussions are, and they don't go seek treatment for it, which can have lasting effects for them. So it occurs in in society with things like car accidents, um, things falling on your head. You know, I've had things bump me on the head before, and never thought twice about it. Um, and uh, it happens sometimes with work-related injuries from slips and falls and also, you know, banging your head on. That's why they wear hard hats. And uh, it happens a lot among seniors, too, which a lot of people don't know about because seniors do fall. And when you fall, they say you don't necessarily need to hit your head for there to be a concussion. And uh, some of the latest thoughts is concussions is not actually like a bruising of the brain. It might actually be some, uh, some twisting and... Um, stretching and that of the, the nerves or the axons um, in the brain itself that causes the, the insult instead of having like a, like a brain trauma as such. So um, with concussions, um, it can happen a lot in society. And just be aware of the symptoms because if you do happen to suffer an incident like that and you're having some of these symptoms, definitely go get it checked out because concussions are serious and they can come with very serious consequences. And on that note, when we come back, we'll be diving head first into concussions. No pun intended, so don't go away. Concussions on Wellness Through Physical Therapy. Once again, welcome back to today's episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. I'm Julia Wiegand, and Tingo is front and center, and we're talking concussions because March is Brain Injury Awareness Month. Earlier, we were talking about certain situations where concussions are pretty common. Uh, you see them in contact sports, non-contact sports, 
work-related injuries, car accidents, etc. Now, what are the signs and symptoms that you should probably get checked get your head checked up. So um, yeah, there is a lot of different signs and symptoms that can happen with concussions and there's a series of what we call sub, uh, subsets that uh, relate to different signs and symptoms. But the, the most common ones you hear about is, you know, when you, when you have a concussion, um, you're gonna have, uh, watch out for things like headaches. Um, that's a sure sign that something happened to the brain. Pardon me. Um, any cognitive functional deficits, um, like uh, trying to process things, having difficulty processing, like getting um, like head heaviness when you have to try and recall things or do some um, tasks like balancing the checkbook or reading a book. Um, so that can be a sure sign. Um, another sign is if you have some visual difficulties as well. So um, when you have concussions, one of the things that can happen is you, you may have difficulties focusing on things. Um, things around you may feel like you, you're looking through an unfocused camera and things are jumping up and down on you. Or you may have uh, what we call a light sensitivity as well. So bright lights, fluorescent lights uh, might make you either headachey or dizzy. Um, dizziness is another one. So there are different types of dizziness. So um, dizziness as if like the room's spinning around on you, um, if you're feeling lightheaded or um, you're just feeling kind of like faint. Um, another sure sign is um, having feelings of being off balance, um, not being able to like steady yourself when you're on your feet, or feeling that you're being pulled one way or another um, when you're standing or walking. And um, um, another sure sign is that the, a lot of people with concussions uh, describe a fogginess of the brain, like they're, they're in a fog where they just don't, don't feel like anything um, is kind of like cloudy in the brain, not being able to think properly. Um, so, and concussions also come with uh, some mood changes as well. People that are depressed, um, people that are down all the time. High anxiety is, uh, is, is common among people with concussions as well. And um, so there's a lot of different subsets of, uh, of concussions. And also one of the, um, the common signs, especially with any traumatic uh, concussion, which most of them are, is most people will have neck pains. So um, neck pains also can trigger off some of these symptoms, including headaches and those types of things. So there's a lot of things to, um, to uh, be aware of with the signs and symptoms of concussion. But if you're feeling anything just not right, um, head-wise, balance-wise, um, pains, uh, eyes not focusing properly, or just not yourself um, after you've had an accident, like a fall or you know, in a car accident, no harm in getting it checked out. It takes maybe an hour or two in your day and it can, uh, very, it can save you a lot of troubles further down the track. Now, speaking of which, so say I was in a car accident, mm -hmm. how soon should someone be seeing symptoms out of me? Because obviously, sometimes you're not gonna know mm -hmm. that you are concussed. Right. What are some of the telltale signs that people should start to notice mm -hmm. in, within increments of time, maybe right. immediate, an hour yep. later? Yep, so um, it's, a lot of people have symptoms immediately. So one, if you lose consciousness, get it checked out. Um, so I played football all my life and I was concussed when I was 12 and I got knocked out. So I lost basically about 30 seconds and don't remember. So if you're in an accident of any sort and you feel that, get it checked out. Um, but concussion sometimes can be delayed as well. So just realize that. And a classic example, I don't know if people out there remember Natasha Richardson. She got into a ski accident, banged her head, felt fine, but I think a day later she, she actually died because of a head injury. So um, as soon as you feel any symptoms, even if it's a day or two afterwards, get it checked out as soon as you feel some symptoms. And um, I'm recently uh, treating a gentleman who actually was concussed around about two or three years ago. Actually, I want to say three. And um, he actually recovered from that concussion, but approximately three months ago, uh, which was two years later, all his symptoms came back. So, and without him having to bang his head or anything. So concussions can, it can be kind of weird and the symptoms might be kind of weird, but um, like look out for the symptoms immediately, but also don't be afraid to keep an eye on them like a day or two down the road as well. And I know that back in the day when I played high school sports, mm -hmm. there was a somewhat of like a concussion limit mm -hmm. on how many concussions you can have until mm -hmm. they say no college sports. Right. And same goes for college. Mm -hmm. 
if not, if these regulations were in place, and because you were saying they're extremely underreported, which I agree, mm -hmm. what are some of the long-term effects? Because the brain is just so complex, and there's mm -hmm. still a lot we don't know, but what do right. we know? So um, the, the, the term is called post-concussion syndrome. So um, when you've had one concussion, um, hopefully everyone recovers well, but if you... When, it's the, when you had that second concussion is when things um, are likely to, um, to have consequences down in the future. So what you really want to do is prevent that second concussion, especially in the time frame before the first concussion is healed. And that is kind of controversial as well because most of the return to sport criteria is based on cognitive function, which right. is like mental such as the impact test. Um, but they've now found that um, for the people that have been cleared to return to sports in the nine months, I believe, after, or is it 90 days? I don't quite remember. But in the period immediately after being returned to sport, they have a three times more chance of getting injured in their lower extremity than someone that didn't have a concussion. So what that tells us is even though their cognitive function has recovered, um, there's still something lingering there between their mind and body balance and vestibular that may not have been recovered. So um, be sure that you get checked out, not just cognitively, but functionally before you get cleared to sport. And so, and if you get uh, repeated concussions, we actually had a gentleman um, who was a resident here, um, who was a Bloomsburg lacrosse player. And when I checked his balance out, I found his balance was way off. It turned out that he had had six concussions playing lacrosse. Jeez. So, yeah, I was, I was like, what? And you're still playing? And he was. But he was a senior, so his um, career was nearly over, which was good. Um, but um, when you have uh, repeated concussions, um, we hear about, um, have, have you watched that movie, Concussion, with the football players? So, yeah. um, uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy is what we know about as CTE these days. So um, having lifelong consequences of dementia as you get older, um, mood changes, mood swings, um, suicidal tendencies is something that can manifest with repeated concussions. So um, our role, especially in trying to protect our, um, our children in terms of having uh, their future being impacted by these problems is to make sure we protect them, one, from getting a concussion, and when they do get a concussion, make sure they recover properly and only return them back to sports when they're fully recovered. Now, aside from the, uh, the impact test, I mm. had to take one of those as well mm -hmm. back in the day on the computer, there are, are there other ways to test for concussions? Yes, yeah, so um, the, the, the difficulty with a lot of these concussion testing is you really want a baseline where you test someone prior to the concussion. Right. So, uh, we do a vestibular test, which is um, called the cobalt test, um, which checks someone's uh, visual function, their vestibular function, and their balance tendencies, how their brain and, and body connects. And um, we can determine um, what they are compared to someone that's normal with their age and, and, uh, and um, height, but it would be best if we compared them to what they were like pre-concussion. So this way we know um, Post-concussion, if they're not quite at their pre-concussion level, they're not fully recovered. So um, um, we always offer that to, um, to high school contact sport athletes here. If you want to get a pre-concussion test prior to the, the season, feel free to come in. We can set you up for that. This way, God forbid you get a concussion, we can have that baseline and show you exactly when you're ready to return to sports. Well, when we come back from the break, Tingo is going to dive into a little more about what physical has to offer when it comes to con concussions, brain injuries, therapy, after suffering from either. So don't go away. More on concussions on today's episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. And welcome to the final segment of today's episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. I'm Julia Wiegand, 
That's Tango, and March is Brain Injury Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier, we have been talking about how you can get concussions, sports, mm -hmm. accidents, pretty much anything it almost sounds like, mm -hmm. and the signs and symptoms to look out for, the short-term effects, and honestly, the almost unknown long-term effects as well, but what we do know. And what we do know is that treating the conditions, it's almost like half of it is just waiting patiently until you are able to do what you used to be able to do. Mm -hmm. But there are also ways that you yourself and physical can mm -hmm. help with that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so some of the, actually, it's, it's, we, we've known this for a while. Um, Recovery is best after a concussion if you don't rest for too long. So um, the recommendations out there right now is actually um, only rest for between 24 to 48 hours. And you have to get started with movement and general activity as quickly as possible because they found that moderate activity um, actually helps people with concussive symptoms uh, improve quicker in most cases. Um, however, there are a lot of people and... Um, depending on what you look at the research and uh, on the high end I believe it's over 50 percent of people um, with concussions ten may have lingering symptoms that last for months to years so uh, the general rule that we um, typically think about is around about 20 percent of people have lingering symptoms but some studies show it may actually be higher than that so uh, management after concussion is extremely important and one of the first things you want to do after a concussion is to make sure you get assessed to check and see what you can and what you should and shouldn't be doing because activity should be um, like symptom based instead of just going out and running a mile type thing because there's a fine line uh, concussions they say is a um, is not necessarily like i said a brain bruise um, it's your brain trying to recover and your brain needs a lot of energy it really needs a lot of blood supply um, so if you're not, if you um, don't give it enough blood supply, you're not going to recover properly. Or if you give it too much stimulus, it may set you back as well. So there's a fine line there. So one of the key things we look, we do is um, is a test called the Buffalo treadmill test, um, where we put people through a graded treadmill test and uh, check how their heart is working, check what they're feeling, and also. Um, check and see how they're, they're responding in terms of their signs and symptoms. And this way we can see exactly how their heart is reacting and how their uh, symptoms are reacting to their, their cardiovascular load. And this way we can determine exactly how much they should be exercising or performing activity on a daily basis. And at least it'll give them that guideline. So that's step number one. Um, step number two from there, um, being a balance center and a vestibular center, um, we obviously are going to check um, all the other symptoms that could potentially come up with a con in, in terms of concussions. So we do um, like video eye screening with our video goggles. I'm sure people are aware of by now. Um, so we can check and see how the eyes are reacting with certain movements because that tells us how your vestibular system is functioning. Um, we check uh, people's balance systems um, through our uh, modified CATSIB um, unit, which is a computerized um, balance program and this way we compare them to their age and height and see exactly how they're reacting in certain conditions and uh, but like I said it's 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 probably best if you get a pre-concussion screen this way we can compare you to yourself versus comparing you with someone that you know may be completely different to you and um, finally what we'll do is we'll do a full body screen and like I mentioned most people with concussions have had some sort of traumatic incident like a whiplash of some sorts so a lot of people post concussion will have neck injuries so um, being a physical therapist that's our bread and butter we work on neck injuries so um, we'll get in there loosen tightnesses um, work on stiffness so that um, we can restore some motion in the neck and if your neck is feeling good typically you're not as stressed you're not as tense and um, you can like move your head and, and get about life a lot better so based off all those tests, what we'll do is we'll get together a program for someone um, which typically includes some, uh, some cardiovascular training based off the, uh, the Buffalo treadmill test. Um, we'll give people um, exercises based on a paradigm that um, this, one of the, um, the senior therapists in the physical um, conglomerate 
has developed um, based off um, what your symptoms are like. So it's a graded treatment program instead of just, he says, instead of just throwing spaghetti on the wall. Um, like with exercise, um, you wouldn't want someone to be deadlifting 500 pounds before they can, like, before they can do a squat, right? So it's, uh, it's something that you need to do on a greater level. So based off um, what we're, we're testing like, um, we'll typically put people through an exercise program. It could be as simple as laying in a bed doing some head movement eye exercises and then progressing them to obviously to the level that they want to get to. So for a, an athlete, um, we would have them running fully or sprinting somewhere um, or with the uh, gentleman who was the, the lacrosse player, um, we had him actually running, uh, looking to the side because he obviously had to run and, and, um, and catch a lacrosse ball, which was where he was having issues because he was stumbling while he was trying to, to look over a shoulder while running. So everything is graded and um, we start symptom wise and we really try and take them from base one or level one all the way back to what they have to do if it's a high level athlete or if it's just a, a mother uh, grandma who wants to play with their kids, we'll get them back to that level. That is, sounds to me like one of the most covering all bases type of situation, especially mm. with the lacrosse athlete because he needs to learn again how to turn his head and run without giving himself another concussion. Right, exactly, and without falling over and knocking his head either, so, yep. Well, Ting, I could go on and talk about this for forever, but mm. unfortunately we are almost out of time. Mm. Thank you so much for giving me some insight as well that I didn't know about when it mm. came to concussions. Yep, you're welcome. I'm <laughs> glad uh, people are here listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you everybody listening out there. Remember, give physical a call if you would be interested in participating when it comes to getting a pre-concussion test before you may get that concussion. There would be a better read on how to figure it out, how to work through it together, and also how to treat the symptoms that could be following right after. That's it for today's episode of Wellness Through Physical Therapy. We'll see you next time. <laughs>